My name is Jeremy Walton, and here's my favorite diffusion filters for the Canon R3. Let's go. When it comes to diffusion filters, you actually have a lot of choices now, which can be a good or a bad thing depending on how you look at it. There's also a range of prices, quality, effects, sizes, and the list goes on. As soon as I ordered my R3, I had to order two specific diffusion filters that I've been using for years now. I've had good results and reach for them anytime I'm going for a specific look. And one lives on my camera 24-7. I'm going to show you what I use with three examples, including a traditional light bulb test and back up my thoughts with a couple films for reference, so don't miss that. If you want to watch a more in-depth video about filters I use, take a look at the film look using filters, where I cover a whole bunch of stuff that really shows why I love these filters. Those two filters come from Tiffin, and if you know anything about the company, they've been in the game for a long time. The first filter is going to be the Tiffin Black Pro Mist Quarter Strength, which I'm sure you've heard of. It's pretty popular, especially the effect it makes on your image. I'll be using the 82mm on my Canon RF 24-70 lens. Before I get into this second filter, let's head over to downtown LA and get a nice exterior shot of the city without a filter to have a base image to work with. And using the Canon R3, we'll shoot in 6K RAW. There we go. A good shot with a bunch of textures and depth with nothing too crushed or blown out. The overcast skies give us some pretty even light as well. I'm telling you, I was actually looking for some harsh light that I normally get every day, but for this test, clouds and rain. I can't win. Well, let's see what the city looks like when we slap on the black pro mist filter. My first impressions are the softness it creates. The contrast is reduced as everything just blends and meshes together really well. And even though we don't have a bright highlight, which I will get to in the third test, we can see how much this filter affects the image. I want you to have a look at one area in particular. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison with the original and Black Pro Mist. Look at the tower. It really shows the softness and how much the filter takes the edge off the digital look, which is a popular reason people turn to the filter in the first place. Adding to the test is going to be my favorite filter, and that's the Tiffin Black Satin filter at a density of one and using the same lens for this test. This filter has some unique features, at least for me, which is why I use it. It's on my camera right now. So let's see how it looks in our test. Even though we're at a density of one, the softness is a lot less than the quarter strength Black Pro Mist, but it still knocks down the contrast while adding some of that grittiness and texture. That look for me is what I go for, and I'll get more into that in a bit. What I want to do now is give you a side-by-side -side comparison of all three examples to really show you what I'm talking about. What do you think? Comment below with your thoughts on this test and let me know what filter you like or what details stand out to you. I'm really curious what everyone thinks. With these two filters, let's go into the city and get some shots to see more textures and find a scene that involves more contrast. Just so you know, the next test is all handheld. It's not an official IBIS test, but thought you should know. It worked out pretty well. Now we're in the city and got a lot more going on. I wanted to get a bunch of glass, brick, metal, and see how well these filters handle it, since we don't see that very often. For this test, the sun did slightly peek out. It actually didn't affect any of my settings for exposure, but you'll probably notice a difference. If I could control the sun, I would, but I can't. Here's the same shot with the black pro mist. I love what the filter does to textures. Even though the image is softer, I feel like the character of the materials becomes more tangible and real. That's what stands out to me. So let's see what the same shot looks like with the black satin filter. You can tell the lighting changed a bit, but that doesn't really matter. Just like the last test, we're getting that grittier image, but retaining more of the sharpness than the Black Pro Mist. This filter has its own take on environments, which is what I want. Don't worry, here's all three shots so you can make a side-by-side -side comparison. Filters can really make a difference, and hopefully these shots can inspire you to do your own tests and figure out what you like. Our last test is a simple light bulb, but to recap my thoughts about these filters and apply it to some films, we have the Black Pro Mist that creates a soft halation effect that some people refer to as a dreamy look, especially in the higher densities. I think it's no surprise that this filter was used in the film Annihilation, written and directed by Alex Garland. If you've seen the film, you might understand, but look at these images. The Black Black Pro Mist filter is really doing its job. We also have the Black Satin filter that in some ways is similar but doesn't bloom like the Black Pro Mist and is more rough around the edges. Makes sense why they used it for the series Peaky Blinders. I know I've mentioned this show before and it'll probably happen again, but how would you describe these images? I think it's a great example of using the Black Satin filter. Now we're going to take a look at an old style Edison bulb that's an LED that I dimmed to keep the exposure under control. Basically, 
what you would expect. I toned down the key and fill light to focus in on the light bulb. Looks good. Now let's put on the black pro mist and see what happens. There's that signature bloom in the highlights, and for me, that's a good amount. And remember, we're only at a quarter strength. For some people, that might be too much. To follow up, let's see how the black satin filter handles the highlights. We still have a bloom, but it's subtle, and we're still keeping some of the details within the entire frame. Now I'm curious what a density of two or three would do. Have a look at all three side by side. It's a very simple test, but if you ever wondered what these filters do, I think this right here is an easy way to visually see what you're working with. I really enjoy working with filters and seeing what you can achieve in camera. I don't think filters are going away anytime soon, so maybe this video helps you make a decision on what filter to buy or gets you excited to experiment on your own. The black satin is still my favorite, but you never know what the future holds or what filter I'll be working with next, and I'm cool with that. Well, there you have it, my favorite diffusion filters for the Canon R3. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button because there's definitely more in the way. Subscribe so you don't miss out. Leave a comment below with your filter of choice. Until then, it's a wrap.